Another central figure with ties to this network of extremist groups was Roger Stone, a political consultant and longtime confidant of President Trump. He pardoned both Flynn and Stone in the weeks between the election on November 3rd and January 6th. In the same time frame, Stone communicated with both the Proud Boys and the Oath Keepers regularly. The committee obtained encrypted content from a group, tra- from a group chat called Friends of Stone, FOS, which included Stone, Rhodes, Tario, and Ali Alexander. The chat focused on various pro-Trump events in November and December of 2020, as well as January 6th. As you can see here, Stuart Rhodes himself urged the Friends of Stone to have people go to their state capitals if they could not make it to Washington for the first Million MAGA March on November 14th. These Friends of Roger Stone had a significant presence at multiple pro-Trump events after the election, including in Washington on December the 12th. On that day, Stuart Rhodes called for Donald Trump to invoke martial law, promising bloodshed if he did not. He needs to know from you that you are with him, that he does not do it now. While he is commander in chief, we're going to have to do it ourselves later in a much more desperate, much more bloody war. Let's get it on now while he is still the commander in chief. That night, the Proud Boys engaged in violence on the streets of Washington and hurled aggressive insults at the police. You oath breakers, do your fucking job. Give us one hour, one hour. Just the previous night, the co-host of Infowars issued an ominous warning at a rally alongside Roger Stone and Proud Boys leader Enrique Tarrio. Encrypted chats obtained by the select committee show that Kelly Meggs, the indicted leader of the Florida Oath Keepers, spoke directly with Roger Stone about security on January 5th and 6th. In fact, on January 6th, Stone was guarded by two Oath Keepers who have since been criminally indicted for seditious conspiracy. One of them later pleaded guilty, and according to the Department of Justice, admitted that the Oath Keepers were ready to use, quote, lethal force if necessary against anyone who tried to remove President Trump from the White House, including the National Guard. As we've seen, the Proud Boys were also part of the Friends of Stone network. Stone's ties to the Proud Boys go back many years. He's even taken their so-called fraternity creed required for the first level of initiation to the group. Kelly Sorrell, a lawyer who assists the Oath Keepers and a volunteer lawyer for the Trump campaign, explained to the committee how Roger Stone and other figures brought extremists of different stripes and views together. You mentioned that Mr. Stone wanted to start the Stop the Steal series of rallies. Who did you consider the leader of these rallies? It sounds like, from what you just said, it was... Mr. Stone, Mr. Jones, and Mr. Ali Alexander. Is that correct? Those are the ones that became like the the center point for everything. 